Happy New Year, guys. It's gonna be my first video of 2020. And by popular demand, I'm gonna talk about gear I use in my latest short films that I posted. Well, to begin with, I shoot everything with a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. I didn't get 6K model because I just, I don't know, 6K, it's sort of in between. I already bought 4K, uh, they're kind of identical. You know, the 2000 extra pixels, whatever it is, doesn't really make much of a difference for me, at least as of right now. So I figured I'm gonna skip that new release and I'm gonna stick to actual 4K. I shoot everything with Olympus 12 to 40, Zuiko F 2.8 glass. I really, really like that glass. It's very sharp, very creamy, and it's fast enough to shoot in a dark environment, for example, like this one right now. For my cage, I use tilt cage with the handle. It's a full body cage, if you can call it like that. And only one modification I've done for that cage. Um, for my audio, I use uh, Rode Wireless Go uh, lavaliers. I'm gonna show you one without clipping, hopefully. Okay, there it is, Rode Wireless Go. Um, excellent lavaliers, I'm gonna get to them in the second. So this is actual lav, and on camera I have the receiver. Now, the problem is the tilt cage does have a very nice cold shoe on the actual cage. However, every time I put the receiver on it, it blocks the button to turn on and off camera. So I had to modify and I had to put small rig a little bit offset to that so I can put that Rode Wireless Go receiver a little bit higher so it doesn't block my button. Besides that, it's basically uh, same cage like you can find it online. I didn't modify anything else. It's very nice and practical. For my hard drive, I use Samsung T5. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Uh, Blackmagic themselves basically recommend that. I shoot everything with a 500 gigabytes. I don't recommend going more in size for the reason that essentially it's not safe and practical to put all your footage basically on one hard drive and throughout the entire day. Generally speaking, you should always shoot a little bit, back it up, format it or whatnot, and continue shooting on a separate drive or on the same drive as long as you have the copy. Because what happens a lot of times, people buy this big terabyte drive they keep shooting, something happens with the drive, and all their footage goes kaput. So that's why I like 500. I have two of them, and I constantly rotate if I have to. Um, as far as the camera settings, I always shoot at Q0 or at 3 to 1 compression. Sometimes, if I need space, I shoot 5 to 1, depending on the project. But basically, if you don't do any kind of crazy visual effects, there is not much difference between them, at least on the visual side. Of course, Q0 is much better, but it's a personal preference. And if you want to save some time and space, you know, five to one will do the job. More than five to one, you start introducing a lot of artifacts into it. So I don't recommend shooting it like that. For my monitor, I use a small HD focus and I put on the tilt -the cage on top basically on the handle and I use core battery to power my monitor. Now that core battery is powerful enough to power your DSLR. However, it will not power Blackmagic. So if you guys thinking of getting one of those um, core batteries, the one I'm showing right now, make sure that you know what you're doing because it's not powerful enough to keep your Blackmagic on. For my power solution, I do use core batteries separately if I have a bigger project, but for my personal use, I really like to be portable, so I use internal batteries. And I know some of you are probably going to say, oh, you're a joke, this and that. For example, my movie Lost in Time, I've shot the entire thing using one single battery, and I still had like 20 or 30 percent left. So depends on your workflow. I know some people like to turn on the camera and never turn it off. It's a little, it's not a good practice because what happens when your camera running or when your camera is on for a long period of time, the sensor kind of overheats a little bit and introducing a little bit of extra noise, extra artifacts. Generally speaking, you should warm up your camera before shooting, you know, a couple minutes to kind of get everything going to the optimal temperature. But after a little period of time, it actually starts overheating. Therefore, you're introducing 
extra noise. So keep that in mind. For my gimbal, I use DJI Ronin S. I absolutely love this thing. And a lot of you guys ask me, how do I balance Blackmagic if I need any kind of extra plate or anything extra? My answer is no. However, here's the thing. In order to counterbalance, you need to put additional weights on the right side of the gimbal. Now, there is uh, all kinds of solution online, you know, you can buy for like 40, 50 bucks. However, I don't believe in spending money really on just a chunk of metal. So I use clamp that I already had and I put a bunch of like screws on it to create counterweight. Now to actual lavaliers. I'm using these Rode Wireless Go lavaliers. They're excellent. However, there is a, <laughs> there is a big quirk with that. Uh, Tom Antos and a couple other channels were reviewing them and they talk about that they hear clipping. Well, it's actually true. So what they recommend is lowering camera um, preamps and increasing preamps on the actual lavaliers. Well, it's generally speaking, it's a correct advice. However, those lavaliers have absolutely no soft clipping. So if your voice is a little bit higher than normal, this thing immediately clips and it creates that chop from the top. So keep in mind, if you want to purchase these, these are excellent. Uh, I would probably recommend using them with external microphone. They have little 3.5 millimeter jack in. So you can use this basically as a transmitter, put it in the back, in the front, whatever, and have a lavalier. I use uh, Sony lavaliers, but for this video, I just wanted to show you as example what they sound like. And uh, possibly at some point you heard a little clipping. This is exactly coming from those Rode Wireless Go. And so far, I don't know if they release any kind of firmware or it's possible to fix that, but this issue definitely needs to be addressed. Otherwise, in a way, it's kind of becoming useless if it just chops off the top of the clip like that and you can't really adjust anything. And finally, for my lights, I use Bowling. I did a video on that. I'm going to put link in the description above somewhere. And there is a new member of my lighting. I'm going to have my phone in my hand. I'm going to go into the app and I'm going to be able to control this light right now with the app. So right now I'm running 5150 Kelvin and I'm going to go all the way down and we can see the temperature is changing. I'm going to go all the way to 56. And the cool thing about this light, it's actually RGB light. I'm able to dial any kind of light I need. So let's go into RGB mode and let's say I want to do everything blue or green. So with one push of a button, I'm able to do all kinds of crazy lighting setups. Coolest thing about this light that it's small, portable, it runs off the batteries. And if you're a solo filmmaker, kind of the stuff that I do a lot of times, this thing is excellent. So my next video is going to be dedicated to that light. All right, so that's about concludes the stuff I use. Uh, you guys have seen my giant backpack. It's a low pro. I can fit a lot of things into it. And one important thing, uh, a lot of you guys ask me if I use any kind of a uh, matte box on my camera. I don't. I think it's kind of silly when you have such a small camera to put matte box on it. I use always thread on filters and for my brow, whatever you want to call it for my sun hood, I use just a regular still photography sun hood, or you can buy optional rubber one that you can kind of tilt around and cover the sun. This is a kind of workflow I like. I don't like to have bulky camera because I think a lot of times people buy those matte boxes without really knowing what they're for because I keep seeing people just have the matte box, no filters inside whatnot. And of course, for commercial work, we're talking about completely different setup. What I'm talking about is my personal setup, my passion projects. Now that I'm not saying that I cannot film commercial with it, it's just a bare minimum that I like, I use on a daily basis. Hopefully this was somehow um, entertaining to watch or maybe you learned something. Put your comments below, whatever you have questions or not. And my next video, we're going to do review of this awesome light. Thank you guys for watching. Again, Happy New Year and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.